Hello everyone and welcome to the Division 3 finals of the State Track and Field Championships. We are at Welcome Stadium, the University of Dayton. I'm Jennifer Beck alongside Danny Holbrook. It's going to be a great evening. It is, Jennifer, and Northwest Ohio flavor in every event. Absolutely. We were so excited yesterday in the semifinals. We moved a ton of kids from Northwest Ohio into the finals. We're going to have some champions today. We are. we got some great sponsors too that we want to uh, just be thankful for. And let's start out by thanking the Ultimate Outdoor, our title sponsor. Ultimate Outdoor, bring resort style living to your backyard every day with a luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. Ultimate automated pergolas, retractable walls and screens, outdoor furniture and outdoor kitchens. And our premier sponsor for Marion Local is OPAC. Tonight's Marion Local sponsor, OPAC, in Osgood. For all your industrial painting, staining, and assembly needs, call OPAC. And there's a reason why we're talking about OPAC right now, Danny. That's because there's a Marion Local girl in the finals, and she is one of the top seeds. Here's who we have coming up. Olivia Todd in lane one from Black River. Gracelyn Lamoro from South Central in two. Kayla Eaton from Triad in three. Azur Travis from Woodmore in four. Grace Moeller from Marion Local in five. Ariel Heitkamp from Fort Loramie in six. Liv Lindemann from Delphus Jefferson in seven, and Brinsley Hiscox of United in eight. Yeah, Azure Travis comes in with the best time of 14.5. Jennifer, she was spectacular yesterday. Absolutely. She qualified in three events, the one, the two, and the 300 hurdles. She's really good. This is her first event today. She's going to be smoking. Two of the three are from Northwest Ohio. Congratulations to those girls. A terrific job. Delta Jefferson's Liv Lindemann finishing in fifth. What a great showing by our runners. Yeah, Liv Lindemann, what a special athlete she is, and she caps off her senior year with a fifth-place finish in the state of Ohio. All right, Grace Moeller, 100-meter hurdle, second place. Congratulations. How excited are you? Uh, super excited. I was a great race. I'm very happy with it. So, yeah. Were you nervous going into it as a sophomore? You kind of don't really know what's in front of you, right? What, what was it like? Um, so I went to state last year as a freshman, so I kind of had the background of it. But I, it's just an experience when you come here. So that's kind of just how I took it. So Second place, got to be ecstatic. To, um, this weekend, it, this, uh, kind of give us a summary. How exciting is this whole weekend for you? It's super exciting. It's definitely a whole like community thing. So it plays a big role when like your friends, family, community is all out here for you. So it's just super exciting. It's a great feeling when you're out here. Now, I got a little uh, sidetracked because I was checking out the hair, right? You got oh, yeah. glitter bows in it. Uh, who helped you out with the hair today? Uh, my mom. My mom helped me out a lot. Shout out to her. <laughs> you guys bedazzled the hair. It looks yeah. great. What a great weekend for you. Congratulations and enjoy the rest of your time here. Thank you. The next event is the boys' 110 meter hurdles. Here are the competitors. Lane one, Jeremy Reber of Waynedale. Lane two, Braxton Barnett of Shenandoah. Lane three, Carter Herman of Edgerton. Lane four, Nathan Booth of Shadyside. Lane five, Michael Baloney of Louisville. Lane six, Jackson Brown of Ada. Lane seven, Lucas Hartle of Jackson Center. Lane 8, Dylan Booth of Shadyside. Top time coming into this race is Michael Malone from Lowellville with a 14.5. Uh, take a look at Jackson Brown in lane 6 with a 15.03. If he gets a good start. Looks like Jackson Brown just got that hurdle back he there. Kind of slowed him down just a little bit. Yeah, Jackson Brown's going to finish sixth in that race. Good run for that young man. All right, let's take a look and see how everybody else finished up. Shady Sides, Nathan Booth is your champion in a 14.3. Louisville gets second, Shenandoah third. Edgerton is fourth. 
Pinedale is fifth. Like you mentioned, Jackson Brown from Ada is sixth in a 15.35. And our Jackson center runner just waiting. Finishes, there we go, finishes in seventh. Good run for our young guys. All right, I'm with, uh, I'm with Carter Herman. Carter, your fourth place finish. Happy with where you were? I mean, I got fifth last year. It's improvement this year. I mean, going out senior year, I still got two more events to run. And I think we can, I think we can uh, do some damage in that. But I'll, I'll take fourth place. Uh, how do you get yourself prepared? Two more events to go here today. What, walk us through a little bit what goes on. Yeah, I mean, I, I've been doing this all year. I've, I've been running four events all year. Um, I talk all four to state. I mean, we've got a great team this year. I, I have really good support behind me. You know, I mean, I don't, don't get to sit much during the meet, but it's a lot of fun. You know, I love what I do. And... I'm happy with the way that this year's gone. Fantastic. Well, good luck the rest of the way. Uh, we'll hopefully get to see you again. Thank you. Our next event is the girls' 100-meter dash. Our premier sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. The girls' 100-meter dash. We have such a great local following here. Uh, local presentation, rather, I should say. Lane 1, Addison Swearingen of Fairlawn. Lane 2, Azure Travis of Woodmore. Man, we just saw her run. Fantastic, wasn't she? Wow. Izzy Zahn from Lane 3. What a state meet she's had so far from Coldwater. Lane 4, Delaney Jones from West Liberty. Lane 5, Alex Kesson of Delphi St. John's. Lane 6, Anaya Charlton of Trinity. Lane 7, Anna Ressner of Fort Recovery. And Lane 8, Taraja Bird of Purcell Marion. What's interesting about this race Jennifer, as you look at Izzy Zahn from Coldwater, Alex Kessman from St. John's, and Anna Resner from Fort Recovery, two, two juniors and a senior. They've been wrestling against each other for three years. These girls know each other like sisters. It's, it's, it's really fascinating when you think about it, and here they are in the state championship all hoping for the top spot. start by everybody. Lane four, Delaney Jones. Lane six, Anaya Charlton. Oh, wow. Anaya Charlton. Anaya Charlton man, Trinity. Look at her in lane six. Anaya Charlton. What a run for that young lady from Trinity as she wins the state championship. 11.95. What's her time? Alex Kesson from Delta St. John's finishes second with a 12.15. Fort recoveries. Anna Ressner is fifth. And Izzy Zahn finishes sixth. Six. Wow. <laughs> Great job by those young ladies. Charlton got a great start, Jennifer. She was out of the blocks quick, and she just led the whole race. She wasn't behind at any point in that race. Alex Kesson, second place at finish. Excited about it? Yeah, I'm overwhelmed, honestly. I didn't expect to run that today. Uh, what uh, was it like being uh, later in the evening than you're normally used to running, right? Walk us through your day. What did you have to do to get yourself mentally ready? Uh, woke up. I got an ice bath this morning, actually, just to really wake myself up and be refreshed. Uh, I used some air compressed boots to like break up the lactic acid. Went to Chipotle because I love Mexican food, <laughs> and I actually usually run well when I eat Mexican food, which is really weird. Um, hung out with my siblings and my parents, and actually I watched D2 and I watched D1 all on the live stream. Oh, that is fantastic. Now I gotta ask though, Chipotle, what's your go-to? Uh, chicken, rice, queso, lettuce. Well, brown rice, I should say, lettuce and extra cheese. Now, I know you had a lot of support, right? You mentioned a little bit, but is there so, someone that, that you want particularly to mention that is the thank you for the support all season long? Uh, his name is Dekel Patterson. He's my club coach. I met him about two years ago, and he has always pushed me to be my best. He's never, ever once doubted me. He's never sugarcoated anything either. But honestly, I don't think I would have the confidence to keep going after my sophomore year if I had not met him. Right, congratulations. Second place finish. Go party it up with some Chipotle, will you? <laughs> oh, yes, I will. <laughs> Let's send it back up to Jennifer and Danny. The boys' 100-meter dash is next, and our premier sponsor for Marion Local is OPAC. OPAC in Osgood. For all your industrial painting, staining, and assembly needs, call OPAC.
And when we talk about OPAC, it's because we've got a Marion Local runner in the race, and in lane six is just enough of Marion Local. Yeah, he's a fantastic athlete. He comes in at 11.02. I'd like to see him get under 11 and go about 10.9. Mm, that'd be awesome. Cody Hessler from North Adams is in one. Garrett McKinnis from Oak Hill in two. Matt Wisniewski of Independence in three. I think I just butchered that. <laughs> Gabe Opong of Tree of Life is in four. Evan Hudson of Oberlin in five. Justin Knopf of Marion Local in six. Sammy Tomlinson of Dalton in seven. And Kaylin Butler of Mechanicsburg in eight. Watch four and five. Gabe Opong and Evan Hudson, two of the faster ones on the trip. Oh, but look at Justin Knopf. He was in good strong start as well but like you said yeah four and five wow. powerful runners right there gabe opong wins it and evan hudson second just like i thought would happen those two are fantastic 10 9 8 11 oh four mechanicsburg gets third independence is fourth oak hill is fifth and that just tells you how close this was hundreds of a second apart looks like justin knopf of marion local is going to finish in seven. seven. Great run by Justin Knopf. Just not as well as I thought he would do, but a great job by that. Man. University of Dayton doing a great job getting those times up there as quick as can be. Our next event is actually a prelim. It's the girls 100 meter race seated. There will be two heats. Our premier sponsor tonight is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Wampak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. In Heat 1, in Lane 2, it's Megan Herring of Lexington. Lane 3, Elena Mendenhall of Maslin, Washington. Lane 4, Melina Sobey of Streetsboro. Lane 5, Esther Faith Hen of Grove City. And in Lane 6, it's our Megan Hurston of Delphus Jefferson. <laughs> Got to do a little work with Megan Hurston a couple weeks ago on the track meet, so hope she does a great job. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun watching Megan race all season long. I've really enjoyed seeing her on the track. And wow, look at these ladies. Wow, they are really getting after it. And look at the appreciation from the crowd. I just love this. Remember, folks, this is a prelim. There will be finals in this tomorrow. Great job by all those young athletes. Megan Hurston of Delphus Jefferson finishing third in this heat. Her time is 28.82. Great job, Megan. Heat two of the girls' 100-meter race seated. Here are our contestants. This is a prelim, by the way. In lane two, it's Jenna Gallant of Pemberville Eastwood. Lane three, Julia Kuba of Marion Elgin. Lane four, Juniper McKnight of Westchester, Lakota West. Lane five, Savannah Nine of Lisbon Beaver so Local. And in lane six, Zoe Roll of Beaver Creek. This is a young lady from Elgin, just outside of Marion, so kind of in our area on the fringe. Yeah, the fringe. We're, we're, we're gonna call it WSN area. There we go, that's right. <laughs> She is in lane three, who we're, we're calling on the fringe. <laughs> <laughs> the Elgin Comets represented nicely by that young lady. I just want to say I love the fact that we have to have prelims in this. You know, Absolutely. we've been watching this uh, seeded races for the last several years, and I'm so thrilled that they are just building in popularity. They are, they are. and you hear the crowd. They really appreciate the effort from these athletes, and we have a huge crowd on tap today. Beaver Local with first place and Lakota West in second place in this second heat of the 100-meter race seated prelims. Time now for our first relay final. It's the girls 4x200 meter relay. Our title sponsor of our Division Three finals for state track and field championships is Ultimate Outdoor. Bring resort style living to your backyard every day with a luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. Automated pergolas, retractable walls and screens, outdoor furniture and outdoor kitchens. That's Ultimate Outdoor. Girls four by 200 meter relay. We have three teams that we are watching in the finals. Lane one is Anna, lane two, Fort Loramie, lane three, Columbus Grove. The rest of the field is as follows. Lane four, Dawson Bryant, lane five, Summit Country Day, lane six, Margareta, lane seven, Oberlin, and lane eight, Montpelier. We take a look at this final, Jennifer, and you look at Dawson Bryant coming in with the best seed time of 142.93. This is going to be a spectacular race. When you look at the other times, no one is under 145. If they get the right handoffs, this could be anybody's race, because we talk about it all the time. It's not the fastest team. It's the team that gets the baton around the fastest.
So one thing that I've been finding, I don't know if you found this yesterday, but I'm finding it's really hard for me to gauge when each of these uh, meets or events are going to start. Yeah. Um, th this is not a criticism. Oh, no, it's no, no, just no. a observation that, you know, there are different things that cause the officials to wait. So here we are, you know, waiting here with the four by two. They are finishing up some things, making sure that everybody's in the spot where they need to be and are going to be prepared. Yeah, a lot of times the reason they do the timed meets is so there'll be some athletes that qualify for more than one event. So they want to give them extended time to, however you want to call it, regenerate, get some rest, whatever. Because if you qualify for three or four events, boy, you're really tired at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we and we have several athletes that are qualifying in those events. We, we definitely, definitely do. But one thing I will say that's probably a benefit to these athletes is we don't have the heat. Oh, no. The past. There's no humidity. So that, it's fantastic. That is, we have a little bit of wind, yeah. but we don't have that heat. It's a nice, it's a nice warm breeze. They have the second fastest seed time coming into this event. They get their handoffs down. They got a real shot at winning the state title. Allison Thompson is the leadoff for Columbus Grove. She's going to hand off to Kendall Colty. And we are getting close to that first handoff. We'll see who gets the first handoff here. It's always so tough to see that first handoff because they're staggered. Yeah, it's really hard to really tell the real story Absolutely. until we get a little further yep. into that second, yep, by second the, round. Yep, you're exactly right. By the by, the second straightaway, we have a pretty good idea who's in the lead. So remember, Anna is in one, Fort Laramie is in two, Columbus Grove is in three. They still are in a stagger right now. And Grove did a good job of getting to that first hand, or that third handoff, excuse me. Grove running on the inside, still in this one. Lauren Ockmoody. Third, third runner there, going to hand off to Jade Roeder. We've got Izzy Meyer for Fort Laramie, going to hand off to Sonny Boissard, and Ava Reed for Anna, handing off to Brooke Nessler. Lauren Ockwood, just put the Bulldogs in the fifth position, come out of sixth position. She's got a really good stride there as she hands off to the anchor leg. Oh, that was one. a nice handoff. Absolutely. That was a very nice handoff. They're on the inside right now. We have some Fort Laramie people near us because I keep hearing, come on, Sunny. This is going to be a race for first place. Dawson Bryant, Dawson Bryant. winner, 142.25. Margareta second, Summit Country Day third, Oberlin fourth. Columbus Grove gets fifth place. Montpelier is sixth. Fort Loramie is seventh. And Anna finishes in eighth. So Dawson Bryan holds serve. They come in with the best seed time. Margareta had the fourth fastest time. They get a runner-up spot. So congratulations to the Bears from Margareta. Our next event, the boys' 4 by 200 meter relay. Our premier sponsor for Allen East is Jones Excavating. R.D. Jones Excavating, serving your excavating needs for more than 50 years. Visit R.D. Jones Excavating online to set up your next excavating project for your home Great or job, business. Mario. Good luck to all area athletes. Go Mustangs. The premier sponsor for Marion Local is OPAC. OPAC in Osgood. For all your industrial painting, staining, and assembly needs, call OPAC. Here's who we have running in this race. Lane one, it's Allen East. Lane two is Tenora. Lane three, Van Buren. Lane four, Marion Local. Lane five, Margareta. Lane six, Tusky Valley. Lane seven, Warren JFK. And lane eight, Colonel Crawford. Jennifer, what's interesting about this race is you look at Marion Local, they've got a squad in the 4x1, the 4x2, the 4x4, and Justin Knopf has already scored points. This is a huge event for them for the team title. They're trying to win a team mm -hmm. title. I know it's odd, Marion Local winning championships, but <laughs> they've got a shot, a real shot at winning the team title in Division mm -hmm. Three, and it starts right here with the 4x2. If they get a top three finish, that's 10, 8, or 6 points, which is huge. You don't need a lot of points in the state championship. If you can get above 35 to 40, you're going to be in the running for it. 
I get a little excited when I talk about winning championships. <laughs> Well, and so does Marion Local. <laughs> right. They're kind of good at it. <laughs> yeah, I just sold hat for them. Thing you see down here at the state meet, Jennifer, is good starts by all the teams. Mm -hmm. You've got the best of the best, and they really showcase uh, those little things like starts and finishes and handoffs and really, really good technique. And, you know, as you mentioned that, and you say we have best of the best, four of the eight teams yeah. in here are, are from our area. <laughs> Absolutely. From our half of them. Half of them are from our area. Marion Local comes in with the fastest seed time just by barely. I yeah, mean, I was gonna it say is it's, super it's close. really close. They get the handoff first. They did. Nice handoff there, too. Justin Knopf with the, with the baton now, according to what we have on our list, anyway. Going to hand off to Aiden Breeshop in a moment. Oh, he's really doing well on the inside. Oh, and he's using that back straight away yeah, to Marian move himself Loka, up. Yeah, Marion Lopez got a real shot at this one, Jennifer. They got the first handoff. Oh, another very nice handoff there. It's going to come down to these runners right here. That Margareta runner is really trying to chase him she down. Sure is. But take a look over there in that outside lane as well. I think that's Warren JFK. Margareta coming right up the middle of there. This is going to be a photo finish. Marion Local, Marian Local. Marian Local still got it. The I Flyers think. are going to win it. it. <laughs> <laughs> what a finish for the Flyers, Jennifer. That was incredible. And just to give you all an idea of what it's like here at the stadium, I had to stand up on the bleacher <laughs> just to be able to see. <laughs> you were in front of me, and I'm going like you're reaching out trying to look, which is great. <laughs> oh, my goodness. The Marion Local Flyers, Jennifer, just got 10 huge points on top of Justin Knopf's points the race before. That was a 129.77 is what they ran. The rest of our crew, Tenora got six, Van Buren got seven, and Alan East got eight. What a run for Marion Local. And congratulations to Alan East with an eighth place finish. Girls 1600 meter run is what we have next. Our presenting sponsor is Lodix Jewelry, your family owned and operated jeweler for more than 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at Lodix.com. We got several local ladies running in this event. They include Brindley Moody of Lincoln View, Cheney Cedarleaf of Minster, Lauren Sattler of Tenora, and Andrea Fowl of Miller City, Natalie Brunswick of Fort Recovery, Allison Woodruff of Riverdale, and Michaela Meller of Liberty Center. Yeah, Jennifer, keep an eye on Caitlin Clark. For, excuse me, Caitlin, Caitlin Clark. Clark. Caitlin Clark is here? <laughs> Folks, Caitlin Clark is now a runner. Caitlin Carr from <laughs> Smithville runs a sub five minute 456, which is absolutely fantastic. She's your leader right now in the clubhouse with the best time. Tess Schultz also comes in with a sub five at a 459. And Kaylee Richards of Maplewood, 458. We talked about Kaylee Richards last year. That's someone who we saw multiple times. Yeah. Our top local girl coming in with this is Cheney Siegerly from Minster with a 507. And just so you're keeping score at home, Caitlin Clark is not here. Guess <laughs> 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 if she was, there'd be a large crowd around her. <laughs> but what we do have is a large crowd still in that group up there. Look at that. They're one lap in of these four laps, and they're still right up there bunched together. Yeah, it's amazing when you watch these girls run the mile. Everybody's feeling each other out to see who's going to take off, who thinks they can run these next three laps. Who, you know, Am I going to give it all now and try to hold on? Am I going to save it for the last lap? Strategy is everything in this race, and right now everybody's bunched up. Well, and I think one of the things to think about is a lot of these ladies run most of their regular season with very little competition. Right, so right. They, they have to pace themselves in a lot of it. And so this is a different environment for them. Yeah, you know, we saw the great Brady Yanks come down to state several years in a row. And, you know, that first year he came down here kind of nervous and kind of stayed with the pack. And that last year he came down, he just dominated. He, he, just, he just went out, he took the lead, and he, and he said to the rest of the field, if you're going to beat me, you're going to have to catch me. And he was dominant. 
And Alexa Portman was the same way. She was she was just as dominant on the girls' side. So fun to watch them. Oh, yeah. Just so fun to be able to cover all of your athletes, folks. Yeah. We love being able to do this. Looks like Caitlin Clark. Carr from Smithville is in the lead right now. I'm going to call her Caitlin Clark all day. <laughs> Danny, Danny thinks Caitlin I, Clark's in the house. That's right. But, you know, I, I don't know where she goes. You never know. She can do a lot of stuff. That's right. I wouldn't be surprised if she could run a mile really fast. <laughs> well, these ladies are now starting to spread out just a tad bit. Looks like we've got a Miller City runner is in fifth at the moment. Our Liberty Center runner is in ninth right now. Yeah, you've got uh, in 12. three different packs of girls right now. You've got the top three runners who are making everybody else chase them. And then you've got a big group of about seven or eight right in that fourth position. Everybody buying from four to eight right in that area. Get ready, everybody. We are nearing that final lap. So we're going to start to see... Uh, we're going to start to see some paces pick up because, as we've said, it's only four laps. It's right. only four laps around. Looks like Cheney Cheaterly currently in 10th place at the moment. She was part of that third place finishing four by eight yesterday. And as you mentioned, it's Caitlin Carr, Carr who is in the yeah. lead at the moment. Caitlin ball. Carr who comes in with a seed time of 4.56.11. Be interesting to see if she can get that under five minutes as she's in the lead right now. It has a nice lead, not really being pushed right now. She set the pace for everybody. She really does have a, a nice pace going. She looks very comfortable as she makes her way around, increasing her stride there. I happen to like her pink. I, I, I do too, but she can't, you know, she, she fell back in the first lap and she kind of felt everybody out. On that second lap, she took the lead. She hasn't relinquished it now. And look at how strong she looks. She knew exactly how to run this race and she's ran it to perfection. Caitlin Carr is a sophomore, which is one of the reasons <laughs> we haven't talked about her a lot the last few years. Um, but I think she's got a lot of promise. Yeah, she's, in the years uh, to come. she's a few uh, feet away from being a state champion as a sophomore. Here she comes. Uh, take a look at her. She's got the grit, gritty look on her face, but she's got focus and determination as she makes her way in. Oh, look at her time. My. 451. 451. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. I don't have the state record in front of me, but, my goodness, 450. Those are blazing times. These, these four, fifth, and sixth place runners are coming in every five minutes. This is an incredible race. It's hard for us viewers to really understand the pace that they have kept up through all of this. I'm trying to see how our runners are. Tenora finished in sixth, Riverdale in seventh. The top three runners all go under the five-minute mark, Jennifer. The fourth girl from Loudonville goes at the five-minute mark, and everybody else is right 502 to 508. Unbelievable. I don't know if I can run my car around that lap four times <laughs> in 508. Time for the boys' 1,600-meter run. Our title sponsor of the DT D3 finals is Ultimate Outdoor. Bring resort-style living to your backyard every day with a luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. Automated pergolas, retractable walls and screens, outdoor furniture, and outdoor kitchens. Here's who are watching locally. In lane five, Paul Westrick of Tenora. Lane six, Trevor Heitkamp of Fort Recovery. And in lane eight, Logan Coy of Tenora. Yeah, top time coming in is Riley Nixon from Toledo, Ottawa Hills. And they're going to have a really tough time today trying to beat that state record 4-10 set by our own Perry's Brady Yinks a couple years ago. Uh, so we'll see how they all do in this one. trying to analyze whether they're actually in a group or not because they're a little bit spread out already. Yeah, you see some guys who uh, get a, a lot faster pace than some of the guys in the back and uh, that's really hard when you when you don't face a, a, a lot of great competition during the year. I'm not saying they don't, but, but some of these kids face better competition and you, well, you're really shocked when you go in that first lap. Right, so right there in, uh, in your lead right now is Will Baker of Mount Gilead. He comes in with a four. 1934. And he just ran that first lap at 58.5. <laughs> 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 
we're laughing, folks, because that's fast. Because that's, that's really pretty, fast. That's really fast. When you say, well, 58 is not a fast 100 time, or 400 time. This is a 1,600, folks, and he just ran that first lap in 58. We are starting to see these guys spread <laughs> out quite a bit, a little bit quicker than I actually would have expected. Um, like you said, uh, they don't get a lot of the competition throughout the season. Right. They come here, they get the top competition. And it's interesting, if you think back to when Brady Yinks was a senior, he would seek out good meets oh, yep, because he yeah. knew he had to have yeah, that. Yeah, and, and he, would, he, he would sometimes go to meets without the rest of the team. Right. They would go to another meet. He would go to a bigger meet. We seen a, we, I saw a couple kids from Colonel Crawford who were national competitors do that. They would go to national meets. Mm -hmm. uh, so kids all over the state do that, and it really pays off at times. Right. Well, Will Baker. Look! At, look at the shades. Yeah, the shades. Oh my goodness! Looking cool. Right. He's looking great, isn't he? And he just looks focused. Yes. He's got his arms down exactly the way that they need to be. Uh, clearly, he's, he's got that running strat. I see a Tenora runner there. He's one of the two Tenora runners up closer. I think that's our top local runner. Actually, where is Trevor Heidkamp? You know what, folks? I'm spending so much time talking about the leader. Trevor Heidkamp, we've had I've had a lot of fun watching that Fort Recovery runner all year long. Yeah, he comes with a great time of 422. Nothing to slouch about there. It's just amazing how quick the 1600 goes to state meet. You go to those, uh, you know, invitationals or dual meets where you, you get kids running at a seven, eight minutes, and you come down here and they cut those times in half, and it's it's just incredible. Paul Restrick is currently ninth. He is from Tenora. I'm watching these uh, these things cycle through to let you know. Logan Coy from Tenora is currently in 14th place. Trevor Heitkamp from Fort Recovery currently in 17th, in 17th, yeah, 17th place. place. Still Riley Nixon moving up race. though. He's actually moving up right now as I said that. He is. You're absolutely right. We just moved up past the Tenora run. This is it. Down to one lap already. Yeah, our Riley Nixon. We're at 316 on this. So uh, let's see if he can uh, go about, I would say, probably around the 4, maybe the 418, 419. Mark. We'll see. I'm just guesstimating here. He's got a really good lead, and he's not being pushed. No, he's really focused. He's self-directed. He's I, I mean, I'm assuming his eyes. You can't see his eyes, yeah. but his eyes are right where they need to go. He knows what he's wanting to do. And there is a runner on the outside who just went into second place, Jennifer. And I don't have a number or a uniform yet, but he came out of the sixth position, and he is in the second place right now. And he is really running hard, trying to track Riley Nixon down. Oh, that's incredible to come out of the sixth position yeah. and move into that spot. He is... I believe that is Andrew Grody from Steubenville Catholic. I think you are correct. Oh, actually, no, I'm sorry. That's not correct. That is, I believe, uh, Beckett Medley from Mechanicsburg. Well, we'll run, check it out and see right run. now. Riley Nixon. Oh, well. That was Steubenville Catholic. I don't know that is who that was who finished in second place. Congratulations to all the runners. Let's hold on for just a second. We want to see how our local runners finished up as they are bringing the results up here. Two Tenora runners and Trevor Heitkamp from Fort Recovery. Trevor gets 11th place, so he moved himself up to 11th place with a 424.44. Logan Coy up to Nora finishing in 13th place with a 427.48. And I didn't see the other Tenora. I did not see that. They, they just took it off the board. Congratulations to all the runners. Girls 4x100 meter relay. Our premier sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Wampak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where homestyle happens here. We're watching Lane 1, St. Henry. Lane 5, Fort Recovery. Lane 6, Delphus, St. John's. And Lane 8, Columbus Grove, four out of the eight finalists are from our area. Yeah, Delphi St. John's featuring Alex Kesson, the senior sprinter. He's, she's going to run that last leg, and you know she wants to win this one for the birds. Technique is everything in this one. You get one lap and it's four girls, and it, you better have good handoffs or you'll get blown away in this race. We're watching those first handoffs. 
saw some really smooth ones earlier today with the Division I prelims. Those all look pretty good there, They too. look really good. Watch Delaney Jones from West Liberty Salem on the inside. Boy, what a leg she just ran for the Tigers. She put him in a great position with the third runner. West Liberty Salem, just history of solid running. One state a few years ago, actually multiple times, I believe. Well, they're in the lead right now, and they just got a great handoff. The Tigers have a real shot of winning the state oh, title. Wow, take a look at that. Oh, look at Alex. Look at Alex Kesson. Look at her move up. She just passed four recovery. Can she pass the Trinity girl? Maybe got oh, third, my but goodness. second seed. West Liberty, what a run by the Tigers. 49-10 was their time. Second place went to Trinity, 49-27. And then Delta St. John's gets third with a 49-30. Four recovery comes in fourth. Fifth is Summit Country Day. Sixth place is Columbus Grove. So, Go ahead. Delaney Jones, the second handoff for West Liberty, absolutely blew the competition away on the backstretch. You want to talk about technique and really great coaching. Put her in that position. That, that, that won the meet for them. Excuse me, that won the race, not the meet. <laughs> All right, here with the uh, ladies from Columbus Grove. Ladies, are going to have you introduce yourselves. I'm Allison Thompson. Kendall Palti. Lauren Ockmoody. And Jade Roder. Uh, ladies, a uh, fifth in a uh, sixth place finish. Happy with us? Uh, yeah, I'm, we made it this far. It's good to be here. At the beginning of the year, if someone would have said, you're going to make it this state, you're going to go fifth and sixth, would you have taken it? Probably not. Probably not? You're, no. you're trying to get a little bit, little bit higher up? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, you guys are all... You know, veteran runners, they got a good chance next year, too. Mm -hmm. um, is this kind of one of those learning experiences? Yeah. Okay. What can you take away from this experience? Um, that <laughs> we ran really hard, and it took a lot to get here. So, And we have the same team next year, so just prepared to run better next year. Now, who would you say is the, the driving force of this team? Uh, I feel like it's all of us, you know, we put the time in for it. Uh, we know we have good anchor, good start, and then we got Kendall and I in the middle to keep our places. So it's definitely a team effort, you know. We definitely look at our coaches and, you know, use them for advice and any cues they have for us. So, but I wouldn't say it's led by anyone. It's everyone is all together for it. How close is this group? Uh, I mean, you, you see each other nonstop. You run together nonstop. How close are you guys? I think we're pretty close. This is probably the closest relay team I've ever been on. We're all like really good friends outside and in, in the sport. So yeah, we're pretty close. All right, I'll make you guys a deal. We'll talk again the same place next year at the state finals. What do you think? Sounds good. All right, congratulations, ladies. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you, you Thank too. You. I'm here with the ladies from Delphi St. John's. Ladies, are gonna have you introduce yourselves. Alex Kesson, Lila Jackson, Kirsten Jackson, Ava Hershey. Ava, we'll start with you. As the first person that starts it off, a lot of pressure at times, right? How do you manage that? Um, just focus in and listen for the um, gun and just run as fast as I can. A third place finish. If, at the beginning of the year, if someone would have said you'd be a third at the finals, would you have taken it? I would have told them they were probably crazy. <laughs> at the beginning of the season, we were definitely not doing too hot. We had a lot of help from our coaches that have been very dedicated to helping us get to where we are today and super happy for that. You guys seem like a really close team. Uh, do you guys have great chemistry? Yes, so we actually all did competition cheer together, oh. leading to three state titles in competition cheer. So we have definitely had a lot of bonding time throughout the years. Now be honest, once in a while you guys would do a cheer during track, won't you? Every once in a while, yes. <laughs> I knew it, I knew it. Now, as uh, the old lady of this group, if you will, right, uh, the, the lone senior, what's it like here at the, at the last time you're going to run with these ladies? Uh, it's great. Honestly, I couldn't have asked for a better group of girls to run my last four wide with. Each one of them put in their time and effort, and I can't say I'm more proud of them. That's awesome. Ladies, congratulations. You want to break out one cheer here before you, you get off the, <laughs> off the camera? Pressure's on. You want to? Jay's on three. Jay's on three. All right. Yeah. Jay's on three. One, two, three, Jay's! <laughs> we'll send it back up to Danny and Jennifer. Boys, 4 by 100 meter relay. Our premier for Marion Local is OPAC. For all your industrial painting, staining, and assembly needs, call OPAC in Osgood. And we're talking about OPAC because we've got Marion Local in lane three. 
<coughs> excuse me, the other racers are LeBray in one, Edgerton in two, Marion Local in three, United in four, Black River in five, Margareta in six, Seneca East in seven, and Nelsonville York in eight. Now, Jennifer, we saw the Marion Local Flyers, the boys team, they won the four by two already. If they can get a top two finish here, that's 10 or eight big points. That is huge going forward in this meet. Yeah. yeah, good handoff for the Flyers. Oh, look at Justin Knopf. They put him on that backstretch because they knew what he could do down there. He's doing a great job holding on there for the Flyers. Good handoff good. there. Oh, oh fantastic handoff. The Flyers have got a real shot here as they turn the corner. Oh, Kyle Adi blazing around that curve. Man, handoff to got, Carter yeah. Jones. Carter and Jones. It's them and Black River and uh, Margaret. Oh, it's going to be tight, oh. Jennifer. I think he got it. I think he got it. We're going to have to wait. It's going to be a photo finish. And you can hear the crowd. The Everybody's crowd went, waiting for the board. Everybody's waiting for the board. Suddenly it's quiet because everybody it wants to see who won this race. Wow. Who won it? Who won it? They still haven't put the results up yet. That's as close a race as we've seen all day, Jennifer. Absolutely. That was exciting. I want to believe Marion Local got the win, but that was awful close. And you talked about how important the handoffs are. So important. Sen United. United with a win, 43-37. Really? Marion really? Local got six. Oh, that, is, that is, yes, a tie for first place. Wow. wow. Margaret a third. Oh, my goodness. It was what? A three-way tie? What? Black nah. River, wow. I've never seen that in track and field. And you hear the crowd. The crowd is responding, going, what? United, Marion Local, Margaretta, they have them on the board at 43.37, a three-way tie. Black River is listed as fourth, just .07 behind. Unbelievable. I kind of want to watch that one again. Yeah, I was going to say. Ken, Ken, can you give us a quick uh, replay? Just kidding. Yeah. Ken Rieger is our Here it is. Director. Here it is. Right here. Oh, here right, it here. Is, right here. Like, look. Whoa. You've got to be kidding me. It, it was really absolutely was. a three-way tie. That was a three-way tie. When you're watching this at home, you're going to see that all three runners stretched over the line at the same time. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> Moving next to the girls' 400-meter dash. Our premier sponsor for Pandora Goboa, who's not in this race but is still worthy of focus, is Sprunger Insurance. Tonight's premier sponsor for Pandora Goboa Rockets is Sprunger Insurance with locations in Pandora and Bluffton. Go Rockets! Go Al Addison Swearingen, Lauren Lodick, and Marissa Bonham. Those are our local runners in this 400-meter dash. Natalie Ryan from Worthington Christians in one. Maddie Langetcher of Smithville in two. Olivia Saylor of Margareta in three. Addison Swearingen of Fairlawn is in four. Olivia Hudson of Oberlin, five. Lauren Laudick of Kaleida in six. Marisa Bonham of Riverdale in seven. And Kylie Montgomery of Dawson Bryan is in eight. And I'll tell you what, Jennifer, what stands out in this race for me is Marissa Bonham from Riverdale, the freshman. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine? Last year she's running junior high events. Today she's in the state finals. One lap around the track. We're watching lanes four, six, and seven. Addison Swearingen comes in with the best time of 57.79. Yeah, right. Yeah, 57.79 from Fairlawn. Take a look at Lauren Lodick of Kaleida. Lauren Lodick She's already made right up now. two staggers right now as she gets ready for that final 200. She looks strong coming in the last curve here on the girls' 400 meter dash. She is. She's pumping her arms really strong. She's increased her stride, but she's got a really nice kick there. Got to hold on to this last part, though. This is the hardest part in the 400, this final 100. This is where that big gorilla jumps on your back, and you got to carry him home. Addison Swearingen in lane four. It's a three-man race right now. And it's lane five. Olivia Hudson of Oberlin appears to be your winner, 56-38. Fairlawn's Addison Swearingen finished in second. Smithville third. Margareta is fourth. 
the young lady from Hudson. What a great run she had. Well, excuse me, Olivia Hudson from Oberlin. What a great run for that young lady with a time of 56.3, and she's a state champion. Hi, I'm here with uh, Lauren Log, fifth uh, place finish. Uh, Lauren, happy with the effort? Yeah, I'm happy. It was a little slower than my PR, but pretty close. Uh, was it a little bit difficult waiting around uh, for most of the day getting ready for this? Yeah, I kind of just chilled back most of the day just thinking about it. Yeah, how tough is that to kind of put it in your mind but not in your full front, full front in your mind, just have it there and still focus on other things? Yeah, it's pretty tough, but it helps me get my confidence up, I think. As a sophomore, what can you take away from this uh, to get yourself back in this spot and maybe get a little bit better next year? Yeah, well, now I have some experience so I can take that and handle my nerves more. But is this a nervous event? Did you get a lot of nerves today? Just a little bit. Once I got on the blocks, that's fine, I think. All right, now, you have a, is that a lightning bolt or a Z on your necklace? A lightning bolt. Okay, the lightning bolt, was this a gift from someone? What's it represent? I don't know. It's just my fast thing that I wear to track meets. I, I like it. Let's hope you run like a lightning bolt next year. Thanks for visiting with us, Lauren. Congratulations. Thank you. We got the boys 400 meter dash is next. Our presenting sponsor is Laudix Jewelry, your family owned and operated jeweler for more than 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Horner online at Laudix.com. Now in this race, Mickey Pendergast from Van Buren will be in lane one. Samuel Haley from Pettisville in six. And Connor Baldoff from Lincoln View in seven. They're about to start here, but you know, we just had the uh, four by one uh, metal stand yes. and we had some changes. We did have some changes. They gave the win to United and they had them at a 43.3. They had Marion Local at a 43.6, correct? Yeah, 43.66 and then they had Margareta at a 43.6. Now from our camera view and our shots, we had everybody and they put the same times up on the board. And what's significant about that is Marion Local gets eight points. Now they've got 18 points the last two relays. That two points could make a difference in this meet. So, uh, I don't know how they got that, but, uh, you know, I trust the system here. They, they got it the right way. So. And, I, and I know that what I we were watching is on a, well, right, we were watching, right. but it's, it, it really didn't look like .3 of a difference. No, it did not. They, they come across, we, and, and, and our, our director showed it three times, and it's the same shot every time. All three guys come across the line basically at the same time. There, there, wasn't, there wasn't three tenths of a second. You know, uh, instant replay hasn't yet happened in high school <laughs> right. sports. Well, then maybe we can help push it along. Hey, we got a 400 meter dash going That's on. That's <laughs> right. Connor Baldoff is in lane seven. He's from Lincoln View. Samuel Haley from Pettisville, six. Mickey Pendergast from Van Buren is in one. Your top seed time coming in is lane four. Evan Hudson from Oberlin with a 48.98. Evan Hudson is winning the race, and I don't know if this has anything to do with it, but Olivia Hudson from Oberlin just won the girls' 400 meter dash. Could they be related? So Olivia Hudson, who is a sophomore from yeah. Oberlin, and Evan Hudson is a senior from Oberlin. I'm betting their brother sister. <laughs> Forty-seven ninety-seven is the championship time. Samuel Haley from Pettisville finishes in fourth. Connor Baldoff from Lincoln View is in finishes in fifth, and Van Buren's Mickey Pendergast finishes in eighth. And Evan Hudson has 18 points for the Oberlin team because he was second in the 100 meter dash, if you remember. I'm with Samuel Haley, who just finished in fourth place. Samuel, busy weekend for you. Um, how are you able to bounce back and, and get a fourth place after yesterday? I didn't have to do the 100. <laughs> so I only had two of us today, so that made it easier. But I, I actually felt pretty good. I felt pretty good this morning. I was surprised I wasn't as tight as normal, also didn't have 4x4, four four, which unfortunate, but I wish we could have had the 4x4. Four four. A lot of pride from a community like Pettisville where you guys take athletics really serious. You guys love each other a great deal. Uh, how cool is this to take a fourth place finish back to Pettisville? Oh, that's so cool. I, I think that Pettisville's definitely got the biggest community. When, whenever you go to the big meets, um, we've got the biggest crowd on the curves. We, all, all the lawn chairs, it's the best family there. Yeah. Well, that's awesome, man. Your smile says a lot, man. You're excited about this. Uh, tell us a little bit about the emotions that you feel on a weekend like this. Oh, I mean, the adrenaline hasn't worn off, so not much yet, but um, it, it's cool to be here. It's so cool. It's such a squishy track. It's a big track. It feels bigger than normal, but uh, it's, it's, it's so cool just to be here. It's such a blessing. What time is the big party at, at Sunday's market this week in Pettisville? <laughs> 
whenever they're open, <laughs> whenever I get back. <laughs> yeah, I know she's excited. I she was excited when we were leaving. She's she's so sweet, that old lady. Yeah, <laughs> I love her. Congratulations, Samuel. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Moving next to the girls, 300 meter hurdles. And our premier sponsor for Allen East is Jones Excavating. RD Jones Excavating, serving your excavating needs for more than 50 years. Visit RD Jones Excavating online to set up your next excavation project for your home or business. Good luck to all area athletes. Go Mustangs! And RG Jones Excavating is cheering for Lane 5, Ryland Jones from Allen East. We're also taking a look at Lane 2, Aerial Hike Camp. She is from Fort Loramie. I saw Randy Jones before the uh, meet started, and I, he had a grin from ear to ear. He's so excited to watch his granddaughter run. And Look, Ryland's done a great job all year. She's got a real good shot. Grayson Lamoureux of South Central in one. Ike Camp from Fort Loramie in two. Sammy Rotino of Mooney in three. Jameson Philippant of Columbus School for Girls in four. Jones from Allen East in five. Azir Travis from Woodmore in six. Ava Hulett of Mineral Ridge in seven. And Olivia Todd of Black River in eight. Trying to watch the competitors get to the, but right now Jones is in third as we come into the home stretch here. It's really been great watching Jones. Um, yeah, she, improve because she's been oh, here every yeah. year. Ninth grade, tenth grade, yeah. and eleventh grade. School for girls being challenged by Azure Travis. Oh, that was a photo finish close at the end. Looks like Rylan Jones may have gotten fourth. Fourth. Let's take a look at the leaderboard to know for sure. Oh, Jay gave it to Travis from Woodmore, 43 39. Philippine second. Oh, Rylan Jones. High camp from but Ariel High camp from Fort Lorman pulled out third place, third. and Rylan Jones from Allen East gets fourth. Third and fourth. Great job, girls. Fantastic. <laughs> Think about that. Three, three and four in the state of Ohio of all the athletes, and those two girls are third and fourth. What a, what a terrific season for both of those young ladies. With Rylan Jones, uh, the 300 meter fourth place finish. Man, we heard your name every single week, uh, breaking some kind of record. Uh, walk us through, how fun has this season been? It's been super fun. I mean, I just keep getting better as the year goes on, so I just can't wait for next year and to put all, put in like all the time in the summer hurdling and see where I can get next year. Yeah, you got a, a great opportunity to build off this for next year, right? Yeah. What are some of the things that you learned where you can get back and maybe improve on where you're at this year? Yeah, just everything technique. My technique's not there yet, but my speed is there, but can be better, obviously. So we'll just work on my starts and like my finishing so I get it better. Yeah, we talked uh, before we got on camera here uh, about if you're uh, happy with the fourth place finish, and you said it was a PR, right? Yes. Yeah, I mean, obviously I wouldn't to be in the top three, but, I mean, my PR got me where I am, so I couldn't have asked anything better. Yeah, talk a little bit about the tradition of Allen East track. I mean, every week you see how good you, that program is. How fun is it to be in a program that good? Yeah, it's definitely super fun. We have a lot of competitors. So, like, practice, we're pushing each other constantly, so everybody's getting better uh, each day. Well, we look forward to seeing you again next year. Great job this year. Ryland Jones, fourth place finish. Let's head back up to Jennifer and Danny. Thank you. Next, it's the boys 300 meter hurdles. Our presenting sponsor is Laudix Jewelry. Laudix Jewelry, your family owned and operated jeweler for more than 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at Laudix.com. We're talking about Van Wert Jewelry because we've got someone close by to Van Wert. Lincoln Views Cody Ricker is in this race. He's in lane seven. Garrett Chapman from Audible is in six. Your entire competitive list is lane one, Daylin Garrett of Covington, two, Braylon O'Neill of Black River, three, Braxton Barnett of Shenandoah, four, Trevor Vote of Colonel Crawford, five, Michael Bellone of Lowellville, six, Garrett Trentman of Ottoville, seven, Cody Ricker of Lincoln View, and eight, Carter Herman of Edgerton. Two sophomores in this race, uh, Jennifer. These are the type of races where you usually see a lot of upperclassmen because this is a tough event, and it takes a lot of practice and years to get better at this. So these two sophomores, especially Braxton Barnett, he's really good. Seven, Cody 
Ricker from Lincoln View. Otto was there trending out early fast. He sure was. He's doing really good right now as they come around the curve heading for the home stretch. Of course, Otterville and the Trenton name have a history with hurdles. Wow, look at him. He is on a mission. Being challenged, though, right he next sure to him. Is. Michael Balloon from Louisville. And Trevor Vogt. Oh, Vogt. Yeah, Braxton Barnett on the outside, the far inside. He's in the third position. He's coming up on the second. It's a race for second right now. Louisville gets first place, 37.34. Colonel Crawford finishing second, 38 flats. Shannon Doa third. Fourth place goes to Trentman from Ottoville with a 38.48. Right here. Garrett Trentman on the last curve there just kind of ran out of gas, but boy, he was spectacular during that race. He also hit a hurdle. I he think did. that slowed him down yeah. just a tad yeah. bit. Great run, though, by all of those runners. I'm here with Garrett Trentman, uh, the 300-meter hurdle. Fourth place finish. Excited about the fourth place finish? Yeah, it wasn't the best race, but yeah, I feel good getting down here and being on the podium. It's, it's good. Last year, it didn't end up as, well, as how I wanted it, but this year is pretty good, and yeah, I hope to come back out next year. And you were fantastic yesterday. Were you feeling real confident coming into today's race? Yeah, I think I definitely had a, felt like I had a chance. Um, I was going to go out, come out here and run the best race, and I feel like I did run my best race, and I, and I pushed myself to the hardest. So, yeah. Now, you're junior. You have an opportunity to improve on next year, get a little bit higher on the podium. What's it going to take? Uh, yeah, a lot of hard work in the off season, and uh, just come back and ready to compete again. Yeah. I stayed at the Holiday Inn right over here, and I think all of Ottaville was there last night. Well, how special is it when you see all that green and gold out there supporting you? It's great. I think we have one of the best communities around come, come out and support all the athletes, and, yeah, it's really amazing seeing everyone, everyone's support. It's awesome. Well, congratulations on a fourth-place finish, and enjoy the rest of your weekend. Yes, thank you. 800 meter run is coming up next. So far, really, really great runs we'll Oh, absolutely. And right now, Marion local boys still vying for the state title. They've got several athletes still alive, plus the 4x4. Four four. Their relay teams are spectacular. It's really been a lot of fun to watch all these races. We've got the 800 meter run coming up next. And this event, uh, two times around the track. We've got several local ladies. Before we tell you, though, we want to remind you that our premier sponsor for Pandora Gilboa, and we're going to focus on the 800 here because we got a PG runner coming up with the boys. It's Sprunger Insurance. Pan Sprunger Insurance. With locations in Pandora and Bluffton. Go Rockets. All right, in this 800 meter run, our local runners are in lane one, Gracie Miller of Liberty Center. In lane three, Camille Borchers of Fort Loramie. Lane four, Grace Remington of Pettisville. Lane 4B, Miley Chateau of Fort Loramie. Lane 5B, Riley Balmer of St. Henry. Lane 5C, Nora Matthews of Bluffton. And 6A, Cheney Cedarleaf of Minster. Yeah, Marin Erdman from Smithville comes in with the best seat time at 2.13, which is, <laughs> dare I say, spectacular in the 800-meter run. This is a tough race. Boy, you run that first lap, and you want to see where the competition is, but you don't want to give too much you know, away. And then you've got that second lap, and you know that's where, the, that's where the weight room comes in. That's where all the training and all the conditioning comes in. So we'll see who's the best athlete today. This is really such an interesting race, too, because it isn't a sprint. But you cannot go slow. No, no, no. You, you just can't. You cannot pace yourself. You've got to go around the laps, and you've got to move. <laughs> So I'm interested to see if Marin Erdman from Smithville picks up and just gets a lead, if that's her idea. Right. She does come in with that 2.13 seed time. Now Gianna Ritchie from Lake Center comes in with a 2.14, and then we've got Rachel Hoover of Fairbanks with a 2.15. Yes, yeah, so this is anybody's race, and right now this is kind of a fast pace as they come around the last curve here heading towards the home stretch. You know, it can be – I. I I'm thinking that there could be a challenge in the sense that some of these ladies, we talk about how a lot of times in their normal season they don't have the competition. So here you got to decide what is the pace because we're suddenly dealing with runners that have a higher level of pace than we normally see. Yeah, and not only that, a lot of these runners are, are dual competitors in the 400, the 1600, mm -hmm. or even the two mile. So this is a really, really competitive race, two laps around the track. And that is uh, Marin Erdman from Smithville in the lead. 
Almost one left to go. Just one. We got Pettisville runner Grace Remington right there behind there in second place. She comes in with a 218.23. So so far doing a nice job of keeping up with that pace. She of those sure leaders. is. Uh, look, there, there's nobody out of this race right now, which is fantastic. Everybody still has a shot now. They're starting to separate a little bit now. But there's no reason someone from the back of the pack can't come up and win this. Everybody's still got a shot. That's right. You know, that, that back pack that's back there. Mm -hmm. There's two in the front, and then there's a couple more. And then there's a pack of what, seven girls yeah, yeah. back there. A couple of them are running <laughs> on that outside area because they don't want to get boxed in. And they're starting to move. They're starting to make their run right now, coming around the uh, last curve here. We'll see how that shakes out. But the battle for first is fascinating right now. Erdman still leads, but she's really being chased down. I want to say a shout out to Bluffton's Nora Matthews, the freshman from Bluffton. She's had such a great season yes. this year. It's been really exciting to see her running and what she's done so far in this first Look year. at Erdman. She looks so confident, Jennifer. She looks really strong. She's going to win this race. The question is going to be what is her time going to be? 213. 213. <laughs> nice run. All right, let's see how our local ladies finished up as we get the board coming up here in just a moment. That is Smithville Erdman. Smithville's Erdman with a 213.17. Lake Central Catholic's Richie 213.38. Wow, that was a close one. Fairbanks gets third. St. Henry's Riley Bomber with a fifth place finish, 217.39. Jennifer, every girl came in under 225, which is yeah. unbelievable. That is moving, moving fast. There's your top eight with Mogadar as your eighth place finisher. All right, joined now by Riley Balmer from St. Henry. Fifth place finish in the 800. And let's get a great shot of this hair. Check out this hair. Now, the hair, does it help you run faster? I mean, yeah, some glitter might get in my competitors' faces, slow them down a little bit, but, yeah. <laughs> that, that is great. Inadvertently, though. Inadvertently, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, fifth place finish. Fantastic. You were telling us before we started, this is a personal record? Yeah. So last week I ran a 219, and today I ran a 217, which is super exciting, especially as a senior, to finish my season strong and go into my college season well. It looked like you really savored the podium. You kind of it's caught you looking around in the stands. Uh, what was that like being up there? It's such, it's like an indescribable experience. Like you stand up there and everyone's rooting for you and cheering for you. And it's so loud on the home stretch. And it's so happy to see when you stand up there, all these fans are standing up there and cheering for you. Uh, so. Congratulations on a great year and a great day here at uh, the uh, state track championship. Now back up to uh, Danny and Jennifer. Moving next to the boys 800 meter one and our premier sponsor for Pandora Gilboa is Sprunger Insurance with locations in Pandora and Bluffton. Go Rockets! Here's who we have running in the boys' 800-meter run. We've got Landon Moore of Pandora Gilboa. He is in lane five. We also have in lane one, Ryan Halpin of Minster. Lane two, Creston Toe of Lincoln View. Lane four, Cole Moorhead of Wayne Trace. Lane four, also Paul Westrick of Tenora. Lane five, Landon Moore of Pandora Gilboa. Lane six, Blake Bixler of Anna. And lane seven, Jack Grishup of Minster. You know, yesterday, two these two Minster runners were part of that third place, four by eight finishing team. Yeah, 18 runners, Jennifer. Not one single runner goes over the two-minute mark. This, I, dare I say it, because I don't like making predictions, this could be the race of the day because <laughs> everybody has a shot at this one. Now, as I say that, somebody will run a record and blow the whole field away. <laughs> I predict, though, it's going to be fast. We're going to oh. watch We're going to watch <laughs> speedy runners right from the start because these guys know what their competition is. That's the neat thing about middle distance and long distance runners. Well, any all runners, but they know each other. They know what their competition. They probably run against each other multiple times. You're absolutely right. They know what these kids can do. Look, the runners from in the state of Ohio check other times in other regions absolutely. all season long. When my daughter was in there, when I was coaching, we did it all year with other athletes. We wanted to know what we were getting into when we got to this level. All right, we've got a lot of local runners. Remember, Ryan Halpin from Minster, he's in one right now. Creston Cho from Lincoln View's in two. They're about to move Ryan over. Ryan Halpin, I Wayne believe. Wayne Trace, yeah, Cole he's... Moorhead, Tenoris, Paul Westrick. Ryan oh, Halpin. man, we got a lot of cheering section going on. Yeah, around. Ryan Halpin is in the lead right now after one lap. And here it comes, Spikesy, folks. We, uh... Let's go, Andrew! 
Actually, I don't think that's Ryan Halpin. I see Ryan Halpin back a little bit okay, further I saw the, back. I saw so the we saw the jersey. orange, <laughs> but the two Minster runners are back just a tad bit. Seventh and eighth, but we've got a Minster runner moving up right a, yeah. at this moment. I saw the big orange jersey with the Wildcat on it, and I just thought it was Minster. Uh, it's, you know what? That's the thing that happens to us at State. They <laughs> all look the same. I think that's Weston Blair from White Oak is in the lead, but it's a slight read. Oh, this this is going to be an exciting finish. Yeah, there are there are there are nine, ten kids who have a chance to win this right now, coming on the last lap. And they are moving fast. Look at the speed of their legs right now. Oh, and Minster, look what's happening right now. That is a Minster. That runner. is a Minster runner. He's he's in the lead right now. This is going to be a photo finish. Second place for Minster, and I think fourth place also. Once again, I'm having to stand way up on the, <laughs> on the bleachers even to be able to see what's going on. Ryan Halpin from Minster gets the second place finish. You were almost predicting that. And <laughs> even was. when he wasn't there, you said he was well, in the lead and he ended up with second Jack place. Jack Grishop comes in at fourth, so there are uh, eight and four. There's 12 big points for the Minster Wildcats. Very, very impressive. Your top eight, uh, all 156 and below. Congratulations to these runners. We're here from the here with the guys from Minster, fellas. Ryan Halpin, Jack Grusha. Jack, uh, good finish for you, fourth place, correct? Yep, that is correct. Happy with the fourth place? Yeah, pretty happy with it. All right, and you came in with second place right there. Uh, how often do you guys run together throughout the year? Every day. Every single day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it pushing each other, it, it has to be one of those rewarding experiences where you guys get here together at the state championship and you both get on the stand. Uh, feels amazing. I mean, we both put in so much work to uh, get here and finally see the um, reward of it. When you're running the prelims and you have to turn around and run again today, how difficult of a challenge is that? Uh, we just had the 4 by 8 yesterday, and, you know, it's not too bad. It's like one meet, you know, 24 hours of recovery. So. Okay. All right, so nice little recovery, but this is a school that loves track, all right? Talk to me a little bit about the tradition and the, the expectations of running track at Minster. Um, expectations are high for sure, I mean, but we have a great support, great community. There's at least 50 supporters in the stands that are always, always there all, every year, and, and um, it's just a great community to run for, and I couldn't wish for a better one. Yeah, that's something I love to see. Just you know, There's a huge block of orange up there, and it's really fun to run for all of them. Gentlemen, congratulations. Enjoy the rest of your weekend here. Nice job. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Moving back to the sprints is the girls' 200-meter dash. Our premier sponsor of our D3 finals broadcast is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. We've got Azir Travis from Woodmore in lane one. Taraja Bird of Purcell Marion in two. Anna Resner in Fort Recovery in three. Izzy Zahn, your record holder from Coldwater in four. Anaya Charlton of Trinity in five. Delaney Jones of West Liberty in six. Alex Kesson of Delta St. John's in seven. And Olivia Hudson of Oberlin in eight. We have said these names over yeah, and over I'm again. I'm going to tell you, listen to this. As your Travis, already a state champion today. Uh, Izzy Zahn, a state champion. Anaya Charlton, a state champion. Olivia Hudson, a state champion. It's the best. <laughs> I keep saying the best of the best. There are five state champions in this race. Are we missing someone right there? Lane six. Lane six. Delaney Jones from West Liberty, and I do not see her down there. I do not see her in the race. And she is not in the race. Of course, we certainly hope that everything's okay with Delaney Jones. Izzy Zahn. Izzy Zahn knew she was going to have competition. We talked about this yesterday in our interview. Well, she's she won the competition. The look at this. Yesterday. Are you Take kidding a look. me? Anna Rester from Fort Recovery. Trinity's Aya Charlton, Are great runner there, me? but look at Izzy Zahn. Oh, she went 24. What'd she go? What'd she go? What'd she go? 24 4. 24 48. Repeat champion, Izzy Zahn. That was a race of champions there. Anna Resner, Fort Recovery, finishing in third. Alex Kesson from Delta St. John's is in fifth. That was a great run. That was a great run. I'm with the state champ, Izzy Zahn, state record holder, state champ, state everything, 200 meter champ, Izzy. How exciting is this weekend for you? Um, it's very exciting. I'm just grateful to be here and it's such a great opportunity and I'm just, 
I'm thankful to be here. Yesterday, you broke the state record. Yeah. When you finished, how how close were you? Do you like, I did something special here? How did you know? Um, my goal was 23, um, and I was like 0.6 away, so... I don't know. I'm just, it was so exciting. Was it a blessing coming into the championship today that you broke the record yesterday, or was that a little more extra pressure? Um, I feel like a lot more pressure, right. but I mean, I didn't let that get to me, and I trust myself, and I performed to the best of my ability. Now, we got to know the secret. Nobody comes out of the turn as fast as you. What is the secret there? I honestly don't know. I guess I have a great, like, turnover. <laughs> um, this year, I definitely worked on my block start, so I think that really helped me um, get that curve, like, really quick, so... It was good. All right. Now, how are you going to celebrate in cold water this week uh, being the state champion and state record holder? Um, I don't know. I'm just going to say some prayers and, I don't know, go out and celebrate, I guess, with my family and friends and coaches. Yeah. Great runner. Great smile. Great all-around weekend. Congratulations, Izzy. The champ is here. Let's set it back up to Danny and Jennifer. The boys' 200-meter dash is coming up next, and our premiere for our Marion Local is OPAC. In Osgood, for all your industrial painting, staining, and assembly needs, call OPAC. In lane seven, it's Victor Holscher from Marion Local. In lane three, it's Samuel Haley from Pettisville. The rest of the crowd is Drew Modaleski of Lowellville in one, Isaac Cox of Rock Hill in two, Haley from Pettisville in three, Evan Hudson of Oberlin in four, Maddox Trace of Wayne Trace in five, Gabe Ocon of Tree of Life in six, Holscher of Marion Local in seven, and Matt Wisniewski of Independence in eight. Keep an eye on uh, Gabe Opong and Evan Hudson, two champions right now, battling right now in the 200. Gabe Opong right away moving up. And the thing about the 200 oh. is there's that second half of it that really is a key. Opong and Hudson, Hudson battling one, two. That's going to be a great finish. Hudson got him. Hudson in a 22.02. Opong 22.13. Maddox Trace from Wayne Trace went down on the track way back around the last curve there, Jennifer. Let's hope he's okay, but they're tending to him right now. Our next event. The girls 3200 meter run. Our title sponsor of this entire broadcast is Ultimate Outdoor. Bring resort style living to your backyard every day with a luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. Automated pergolas, retractable walls and screens, outdoor furniture and outdoor kitchens. It's Ultimate Outdoor. This is a final, no prelims in the 3200, so that's why we've got the entire crowd here, and our local ladies are in lane two, Lauren Sattler from Tenora. Lane five, Mia Amador of Patrick Henry. Lane six, Allison Woodruff of Riverdale. And lane seven, Brittany Arnold of Botkins. Let's not forget the state record holder in 04, Sonny Olding from Minster with a blazing time of 10.38. Sunny Olding was so much fun to watch. She's such a such a solid runner. The closest we have coming to her in a seed time here is Kaylee Richards of Maplewood. She's got a 10.52.69. And then Caitlin Not Clark. <laughs> Caitlin Clark. We, we only say that because of what Jamie kept saying earlier. Well, I thought she was here. I, I was hoping Caitlin Clark was in the crowd. Caitlin Clark of Smithville, another incredible runner. A 10.55.30 is her seed time coming in. Oh, I forgot. Rebecca Geis of Heartland Christian. Sorry, Rebecca. 10 53 40. Well, I'm just going to say this. If Caitlin Carr continues on the rampage she is, we're going to call Caitlin Clark Caitlin Carr. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bunched group right there. These ladies are piecing themselves off of each other right now. And while we watch that, let's talk a little bit about what just happened in the boys' 200 meter dash. Yeah, Maddox Trace from Wayne Trace was coming around the last curve and he pulled up and he grabbed his leg and he immediately went down. The crew came over, they tended to him. The young man gets up, he finishes the race. He did not want to not finish. Uh, got a great round of applause. Uh, he came in with the second fastest time, so just an unfortunate incident. We see it all the time with these young athletes, and injuries are part of the game. That's right. Brittany Arnold from Botkins was our leader for quite a while. She's still right up there in that group, right about in second place right now, so she's keeping pace with that leader group at the moment. And you also want to mention back from the 200-meter dash, we didn't have a chance to mention that Victor Holscher of Marion Local finished in fourth. Yeah, which is important to that event is he got four points, Jennifer, and Marion Local in the last four events have secured 22 points, which is huge for the team title. 
Marion Local, just a powerhouse year this year. It's been really fun covering them. Uh, always fun to cover Marion Local, yeah. to be honest, in pretty much everything. <laughs> They're pretty good. That's Heartland Christian's Rebecca Geis, who is your current leader. She's the one in pink. And Brittany Arnold from Botkins continues to be in that second place spot. Yeah, right now the girls are all bunched up coming into the second lap here. Typically in this race, you're not going to see them kind of separate here for another lap or two, and then you'll see the uh, the best of the best start to pull away. This is, of course, a race where uh, runners have their system. They know how many laps, they know where they need to be and what they need to be doing at that point. We are starting to watch Bakken's move back just a little bit. She's still up there, though. She's still in that top eight yeah. stand. Jennifer, do you know this from your years of distance running? This is ideal weather for distance oh, running. absolutely The, the sprinters don't like the cool <laughs> temperature. They want the hot weather. The distance people, they love this cool weather. The distance people finally got what they wanted That's right. one year. I was going to say. This <laughs> This is the first year that Don't I believe used to that it. that has <laughs> happened. We've sat down to state meet and just sweated, and this year we've got coats on, which is great. Yeah, I bet these ladies are not complaining at all about what this weather is like down there. It is sunny. Uh, uh, and, and we say we got coats. It's not cold. It's just brisk, and it's, it's nice. And that's yeah. right. It's breezy. We were looking yeah. in the mid-70s for temperature today. Earlier this morning during our Division Two prelims, it was a little toasty, to be honest. It did get hot, but nothing like what we had no, last no. year oh, or the goodness. past few years um, in Columbus. Not to say it's Columbus. We, I mean, oh. Dayton and Columbus can have the same weather. Yeah, if you remember <laughs> last year, we had camera people dropping because of the heat. We had all kinds of issues with the weather. So this is a welcome relief. Still quite a group of ladies here in this race. Some of them even running on the outside. It's not really what you really want to do because you're adding a little right. bit of I'm, yardage I'm kind there. Of questioning but the strategy there. Uh, stay on the inside, ladies, I'm telling you. Hopkins runner moving her way back up again. She's now in the fifth spot. Brittany Arnold from Bachman. She comes in the 11 19 04. And Rebecca Geis from Heartland Christian right now with the lead. She comes in with a time of 10.53. Expect to see her try to probably take off here, try to take command of this race as uh, everybody's standing behind her right now. Well, and that's exactly what you mentioned. A lot of time what happens with these really standout runners is they just kind of tick along for a while. They know what they're doing. They know what the pace. They know what they have left. And then one moment you're just going to see well, a change. Well, yeah, look, th these kids, I said this earlier, these girls and these coaches, they look at times all over the state of Ohio. Every one of these runners knows that Rebecca Geis runs a 10.53. So she's getting a little respect from everybody. They're all waiting to see what she does right now. Got a new leader there, and I believe that is... I actually didn't see who that was until we moved past. The girl in green. The girl in green in the bright green. So we'll get a better shot here as they come around the last curve. They almost look like they're running in sync, some of these yeah. girls. Those green uh, shoes. That's Reese Landis New from London. New London. New London, yeah, New London. She comes in at 11.04. Yeah. So, you know, you never know also what kind of times they had in their regional to get to this point. We talk right. about how the competition varies from place to place, especially in a race like this. And Rebecca Geis is right there as those two start to separate from the pack. Four laps to go, so we are halfway through this race. And as we are moving along in this race, we just want to take a moment to remind you that WOSN and TV44 are viewer-supported TV stations. Your donation of any amount helps keep broadcasts like this one continuing. You know, we've had a great season covering high school sports. It's been a lot of fun. It has been a lot of fun. You know, we start the season in late August with the football campaign. We go to basketball, and then we go into the spring sports. And it's a grind all year long, but everybody, WSN, just loves what we do, and it's so much fun. I said to my wife today, I said, it's my last broadcast until August. Mm -hmm. It's sad. We, I love working with the company, and uh, it's, it's a lot of fun, and just getting to do things like this, it's a dream come true. You know, and the truth is we really love showcasing we do. your yeah. students, your kids, your grandchildren, with the neat things that they are doing. And, you know, so your your financial support is 
100% of it is used locally to continue things like this, continue our programs on TV44, all of these local things that you really can only get here. Absolutely, and, and we have a lot of great people to put a lot of, you were up till 3.30 this morning working. I was working, up till 3.30 you know, in the Miles morning. Miles and I were here last night late, and everybody, yeah. you know, back up here early today and uh, just just a love affair with the sports. That's right. If you watched our D3 highlight show that happened that aired right before this, um, well, we had the D3 highlight show and then we had the D2 prelims and now we have uh, of this airing. You're probably getting tired of hearing my voice, but yes, I was up till 3.30 in the morning because I wanted you to have a great show. I hope it was great. 3.30 in the morning, I may have made some errors. I certainly <laughs> Hope not. Reese One. Landis is trying to pull away from uh, Rebecca Geis. Yeah, take a look at Reese Landis, New London senior. Rebecca Geis currently in second place, but it's nice, interesting strategy. Uh, you look at uh, the leader; she's a senior, and 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 Geis, the sophomore behind her. You just wonder if. Uh, the senior, you know, trying to make the sophomore, hey, you're going to catch me, and I'm going to work you real hard here, see what you got. Well, there's something to be said about the wisdom that comes oh, through absolutely. the year. You know, the talent, the talent's there, and the natural talent's in there, but every year the wisdom that comes from it. So we got first place, second place, and this is going to be a battle for third place. There's a group of four ladies right there looking at that third place spot. Yeah, we, we, we focus so much on the winners, but when you look at the top eight that go to the podium, and you can be one of the top eight in the state of Ohio, that's unbelievable. You're considered all state if you're on the podium, so that's a, a great accomplishment for all the athletes. Two laps to go, less than 800 left. Reese Landis from New London, your leader, Heartland Christians, Rebecca Guy second. Maplewood is in third. Smithville is in fourth. Peebles fifth place right now. Loudonville is in sixth place. Danbury is in seventh. East Canton in eighth. Botkins, Brittany Arnold currently in ninth. Tenora is in tenth. Patrick Henry is in eleventh. Ottawa Hills twelfth. Grandview Heights thirteenth. Riverdale currently in fourteenth place. Dayton Christian fifteenth. Cedarville currently in sixteenth place. And Shenandoah in seventeenth place. And this is the point where the ladies are going to pick things up. Uh, the best they can, and we're seeing that with our leader. Yeah, she, got, has, she has increased her speed. She sure has, and you got to wonder if Rebecca Geis has it left in the tank. She's starting to fall way back, and uh, she is in second right now, but there are two girls trying to go around her, and uh, right now, if you look at the, the way Reese Landis is running, she looks really comfortable. She does. This senior, uh, she, we've seen Reese Landis before. I can't believe I didn't remember that until this point. <laughs> I saw the hair, and I suddenly saw an image from previous races <laughs> that we've had before with her. And we just heard that gun go off. It's down to the last one. Yeah, Reese Landis looks really comfortable right now. She's got a sizable lead as she goes down the back stretch. Our closest local runner to the front is Botkins, Brittany Arnold. She's just off the medal stand right now in ninth place. Uh, she is our, our highest local runner right now. All these girls come in under 12 minutes, which is remarkable for a girl's 3,200 meter run. Wow, and really nice, uh, really strong strides by our leader. Yeah, she just looks comfortable. Now, she's got another young lady coming up pretty hard on the inside, and she's really making up ground. So, and Reese Landis oh, and she just, just turned. looked. Yeah, she, she just, just turned looked around. and she just saw it. And I don't know if she's got it in her. Look what's Boy, happening Reese right now. Landis. Because, she, oh, oh, maybe. you got to be maybe kidding not. me. Reese Landis just got passed, and she's not got anything left. That is Kaylee Richards from Maplewood, I think. And we've got a, oh, this is a fun ending. Fun ending. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. Reese yeah, Kaylee Richards from Maplewood at 1047.52. Kaylin Carr Kaylee from Smithville Carr. comes in. For a second, when I say a fun ending, that's not what I meant, but it's no, fun I to know. watch. Yeah, absolutely. It's fun to watch. Here comes Brittany Arnold. She is making her way in. Wow, what a finish. Well, and you saw Reese Landis. She led almost the whole race, and she comes on the last lap. She just had nothing to give. The girl went around her, and she couldn't compete because she was so gassed. 3,200. Love it at the state oh, meet because you never know what's oh, going to happen. No, no. 
Our next race, the boys' 3,200-meter run. And before we do that, we want to remind you that our premier sponsor for Pandora Gilboa is Sprunger Insurance with locations in Pandora and Bluffton. Go Rockets! Boys' 3,200-meter run in the competitors. We're watching lane three, Luke Ellerbrock of Columbus Grove. In lane five, Theo Andreas of Bluffton. And in six, Trevor Heitkamp of Fort Recovery. Three runners that we've been covering all season yeah, long. Fantastic. More than years, all seniors. Just a great group of guys. Would love to see these guys go one, two, three, and I don't care what order it is. <laughs> Luke Ellerbrock comes in to three, nine, twenty-eight, seventy-four. He was actually skipping his way up <laughs> to looks, the top. <laughs> he looks really happy to be here. <laughs> I don't know anybody happy to run eight laps around the track. <laughs> Well, our top times coming in are on the outside in lane one. Lane Denier of White Oak comes with a 9.24.20. And then on the far outside, Blake Rogers of Belpre comes in with a 9.25.81. Yeah, if, if you don't know much about track and field and, and you see those times, you're thinking, okay, well, uh, yes, those are fantastic times. Those are the top times in the state of Ohio. Trevor Heitkamp of Fort Recovery right up there from the start. You see him. Looks like he's in second place right now. I think he is. You are right. He comes in with a 938.79. We'll be able to see him. They've got that nice purple jersey down there at Fort Recovery, and they've turned the lights on here at Welcome Stadium. They're running under the lights. I see Luke Ellerbrock back there. He's got the sunglasses on, the white jersey. And his, uh, his signature style of run, which works for him. It works for him. Everybody, <laughs> ha Every year we come down to the state meet, and we always see kids who don't run anything like you taught the kids to run, mm -hmm. and they just go and go and go. So whatever works for you, just go for it. And I've talked about Luke before. It's absolutely a respectful, oh, absolutely. A respectful observation because I do love seeing how how solid, successful runners always have something unique about yeah. what they do. When I, when I coached sprinters, I used to tell the kids, we're going to put an imaginary line across your chest. I don't want you bringing your arms across it. I want your arms going up and down. And we'd come down here, and we'd see kids with just the craziest style, and they'd look at me and go, Coach, that, how's he supposed to? You know, it's it just it works for him. All right. What's working for Rittman right now, Luke Snyder is currently in the lead. Fort Recovery's Trevor Highcamp still hanging out there right close to second place, and pretty much everybody's grouped up. We cannot really call this race at all yet. No, this is a great pace right now. We've got 18 boys. And all 18 are right there together, so. A little bit of a possible lead change coming up here in just a moment. That looks to be... Um, you know what? It's just too close to call. Yeah. Look at that group. They're just... Uh, it's just... We're going to have to wait till they sort themselves. They're just hanging out together. And, and Jennifer, they may not sort themselves out until that last lap because they all look really comfortable right now, and everybody looks like they're running their pace. Somebody right now is thinking about what kind of move they want to make You're, and that, when. That's so funny you should say that because when I watch these kids and I look at runner five, six, seven, eight, and he's back there thinking, if I make my move, do I make it now? Do I make it on the fourth lap, the fifth lap? So somebody making a move, I think we've got Trevor Heitkamp moved himself outside because he knows if he makes that move, he's got to do it back there on that straightaway. He really is not going to want to run around the edges, which he might have to do in a moment. But he's he's looking. He's yeah, looking he over. And, and really, he's running He's running a lot I'm more. I'm sorry, Luke Ellerbrock. I'm yeah. sorry, Luke. I just called you Trevor. I <laughs> meant Luke. I am operating off a of three-hour sleep, folks, because uh, it's just been a long weekend. But Luke Ellerbrock. Trevor's in there as well. <laughs> Trevor's up there right now. One, two, three, four, five. Seventh place right now. Looks like where Trevor Heitkamp is. Luke Ellerbrock's around 10th, 11th right now. And it looks like... Five, five laps to go. Still too, too, too early to call right now. Yeah, when we get to the halfway point, I predict we're going to start to see some separation. We will. We will. We're starting to see them separate a little bit now, but still it's anybody's race. So, Yeah, because look what we saw in girls 3200. Amazing. We thought Amazing. we knew who the winner was going to be. And then in the last minute, people came up. And even in the 1600, we saw people, somebody go from sixth place up right to second, second place. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, wonder, you see those kids on that last lap just give it everything they have. And... Uh, you wonder why they do that. Blake Rogers from Belpre is winning the third position. I just saw him go around the fourth place runner. He's in the third position. And he looks really comfortable right now. Let's wait and see what he does. Blake Rogers comes in with a 925. I think that Asher Long from Covington is our current leader. I think you're right. 
think you are correct. He comes in with a 928-27. And there you see and Rogers. And you mentioned yeah. Belpre's runner. Yeah, he's thinking about it right there. You can see he's just he, he's he's thinking about how many laps he's got left. If we can get this around, I'll give you an update on who is leading. I feel Andreas is in 17th right now because I see that. Covington's Asher Long is your leader. White Oaks, Landon Iyer currently in second. Belpre is third. West Liberty Salem in fourth. Rittman is fifth. Mount Gilead currently in sixth place. Adina seventh. Columbus Grove, Luke Ellerbrock has moved his way up to eighth. Ottawa Hills in ninth. Waynedale tenth. Fort Recovery's Trevor Heitkamp is in 11th place. Mount Gilead is in 12th. Margareta, 13th place. And Sonia, 14th. Bluffton's Theo Andreas is in 15th. Cedarville is in 16th. And McDonald currently in 17th. Uh, Luke Ellibrock, that's I I'm impressed. Though, as I've watched him run throughout the, the year, he he likes to do that. He has a plan in those last few laps usually. Yeah, he's looking really strong right now. And the other thing, Blake Rogers from Belfry and Landon and I are the two top times are both two and three right now. So we'll see how that goes. Three laps to go here. Luke Ellibrock's in seventh. He's moving himself, I think, maybe sixth yeah, place. Yeah, comfortable Almost right now. Almost fifth place. Yeah, doing a great job. The top three are starting to separate themselves in this race. They are, but I, I, you can see uh, the Belpre runner that you keep mentioning. Um, he, he's, he's, he's picking it up. Yeah, he I, wants I, to keep up with them. Yeah, I wonder what his plan is right now. He's in the third position, and uh, he doesn't look as comfortable as the first two. So we'll see. Nine twenty-five, eighty-one. So he comes in with a good time. He's a, he's a good runner. Yeah, he is. It, the flowing hair gives the way the good runner status. They always have the good. The runners always have the good hair. You know, earlier today we had the Division One prelims, and uh, we didn't broadcast that because we didn't have any but Division One no runners. Run, yeah. We just had a couple field event runners, but there was some pretty awesome hair. I had a chance to watch <laughs> it, and there was some flowing hair going. So you on. had flowing hair. Did you have any sunglass guys? I did, did have sunglasses. <laughs> we had sunglasses. We had hair. We had a lot of braids. Braids seem to really be yeah. in. All right. <laughs> no Long. braids on these top three runners. Just some. Flowing Owen Hare in third place right now. Asher, sunglass guy. He's looking good right now. Asher Long from Covington still in the lead. That group. Oh, look, Luke Ellerbrock uh, moving himself. He's in the fifth place spot right now. Still running on the outside just a little bit in lane one, just a tad bit. Um, Get yourself in a good position, Luke. Get yourself in a good position. That's right. Two laps to go, so less than two laps. We're less than 800 left, and you can see those three leaders uh, their strides have increased, and look at the Belpre runner. Yeah, I was going to say, Blake Rogers making his move. You are look doing a great job of predictions. <laughs> you you have been calling things pretty well. He is not just making a move. He's making a move to the first place. Well, th he's all in right now. Th there's two la or there's one lap after this, Jennifer, and he's going. He's betting on himself right now because he just took the lead on the curve, and he's going to have to give it all he's got. Now, what you aren't seeing right now because we're watching the top three is that Luke Ellerbrock has moved himself into fourth. He looks fantastic. Fourth place. He is fantastic right now. And he is he is separating himself from the rest of the group. There he is right there in the white. And look at this. Rogers is going to lose the oh. lead here. you got to be kidding me. All right, let's move back to the leaderboard if we can. Thanks, Ken. Yeah, wow, down to less than 400, and this is it. Who can sprint? It's <laughs> going to be a sprint, guys. And we have a new leader. He is absolutely taking oh, off. Oh, wow. you got to be kidding me. You know, that's the neat thing about 3,200 runners. He's just tucking in. He yeah. was doing his thing, and then he does his thing. He Look turned, at that. Yeah, he just turned his back on everybody and took off. What a run by all of these guys. First place. I, I don't uh, know if Asher Long's out of this race or not. We're going to see what he's got. He's in second right now. Yeah, he's got a real nice stride he right does, now. He does, yeah. Um, he's, uh, he's, he's distancing himself from third at the moment. And I feel for Blake Rogers because he took off a little too soon. I feel like if he'd have waited till the last lap, he maybe had more in him, but he's going to finish third in this race. Yeah, people are starting to stand up and cheer, which I love to see with the 3,200. 
Nine oh nine, Jennifer. All right. My goodness. Ken, if we can scoot back because we want to show what Luke Ellibrock is doing right now. He's trying to hold on to fourth place here, and he's got it at the moment. There he is. Come on, Luke. Come on, Luke. <laughs> Come on, Luke. We got a runner coming up on the outside, but no. I he just get a little look. Luke's gonna finish fourth, fourth place for Luke Ellibrock from Columbus Grove. What a great run. What a great uh, what a great career. Absolutely. The high school career he has had. With Luke Ellerbrock, fourth place finish in the 3,200. Uh, Luke, um, your plan, it looked like it was, you had to be happy with it. You really gained steam to, throughout this race. What was your game plan coming in? I just wanted to hang with the leaders, and they kind of took off at about a mile to go, and I didn't really have that in me, so I just kind of went to plan B and held with the pack that I was in because I knew those top three, they just took off, and I knew I couldn't hang with them, so I just hung with the second pack, and I got fourth place in that pack there, so it... Plan B went well. Okay, so you had to be happy with that last lap. You gained a lot of ground in that last lap. Uh, what was your thought process going into it? Yeah, I just wanted to take off, give it all I got in that last 400. I knew that there was a pack of like four or five guys right behind me, and I didn't, didn't want to get beat by them because that could put me off the podium. So I just took off and wanted to stay ahead of them and distance myself as much as possible. How tough is it to navigate that pack? It's tough because everyone's just in the same spot for about a, the first mile. Everyone just runs together, and it is it is tough because you always want to be right on the inside of lane one, run as run the least amount of distance as possible. So it is it is tough getting in those spots that you want to be. Well, congratulations on, on a great finish, and enjoy your rest the rest of the weekend here at the state championship. Thank you, uh, Luke Allerbrock, fourth place finish. Let's head up to Jennifer and Danny up in the booth. Wow, I cannot believe how fast this meet is going, Danny. I mean, really going. Yeah, it's been a great meet so far. Here we are, the last event of the day. Boral's 4x400 meter relay. Our title sponsor of this entire broadcast is Ultimate Outdoor. Bring resort-style living to your backyard every day with a luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. Automated pergolas, retractable walls and screens, outdoor furniture, and outdoor kitchens. It's Ultimate Outdoor. Outdoor. Girls four by four. We've got Colonel Crawford in lane one, Smithville in two, Margareta in lane three. It's cold water in lane four. Mogador in five, Calvert in six, Summit Country Day in seven, and Minster is in lane eight. Looking up some scores. We're I trying, am trying to, to see. get it. We're just, I'm having so much trouble getting on it. Yeah, so miles, many people were on it. Mile split is what provides us the live results, but we are discovering that. Um, so many phones are in yeah. operation here that well, it is not. Yeah. Of course, by this point, you can actually look at Mile Split and see the results because this is a tape-delayed broadcast. Taking a look there at lane four, Audrey Illig from Coldwater is your leadoff. She qualified to four state as a freshman in the 400. Did not make it to finals, but, man, just qualifying is impressive. Absolutely. I've got some pre or I've got some results here for all the races. I'm looking at team scores is what I'm trying to find. So Coldwater's going to anchor with Izzy Zahn. Not a bad choice. Izzy Zahn, the <laughs> 200, the 200 state record holder as well as a back-to-back -back champion. Mm, this is. Ah, uh, they've got every result except team scores, and I can't find the team score. First ladies will stay in their lanes for this entire lap. And they are staggered. That's something to always keep in mind as we're watching to see who is leading. Some country days runner is off to a strong start. That's McKinley Kramer over there in lane seven. She looks really good right now. This is the most anticipated event of the day. You know, it decides so many meets, and here we are in the state finals, and it could decide the state championship. Absolutely fun. Always love the 4x4. Four four. Every single leg of the race can change. Oh, course. absolutely, and everybody's done with their event, so all your teammates are watching because you're the main attraction. Kim Kramer still appears to have that strong lead, but let's watch as they get closer to the handoff to see where it is as that Brooklyn Brown coming up in lane. No, actually, that's Mogador's Julie Tompkins. Hands off first, I think, as yeah, I'm trying so. to watch the sea of people. Yeah, Mogador has the lead right now. You're right. Well, she looks really strong right now in that second position. So Mogador comes in with a 4.02.60. Coldwater has that top time coming in with a 4 minute point six one. 
cold water. Looks though in third place at the moment. Does have a little bit of work to do to get up there. Yes, yeah, she does. Decker winning with the baton at the moment. Mogador is first. Um, second place. Okay, you're watching back here a little bit. Mogador first, yeah, second but... place right there. I think Coldwater's in third. <laughs> Coldwater's in third, but gaining. Is that Smithville? Gaining. Is it Margareta? Maybe Margareta. Margareta has a 402.26, so you're looking at the top three seed times coming in, and a really nice, uh, Becca Wedding really has done a nice job of, of uh, shortening that distance. Kirsten Keller now with the baton, according to what we have listed here. Minster, Minster currently is in fifth place. And they Minster's are just a, about to go into fourth yeah, place. Minster's yeah, Minster's about to go into fourth place. You never want to count Minster no. out, ever, ever. We got Carrie Heckman, Claire Bowen, Margaret Helmelgarn, and then Chaney Seagerly. Yeah, she's trying to go around the fourth place runner. She's really having a hard time. That fourth place runner is fending her off right now, so it's a great battle for fourth place. Coldwater still in third place. Margaret, uh, Margaret, Margaret, who be decides in the lead? I'm going to say, I can get a better look here. Boy, I just can't make that out. Remind you that you at home can actually see it better than we can yeah. right now. Well, we're going to see if Coldwater can pull this one out. <laughs> Well, oh, and she is already chasing her down and She's making the, the first position. one. Already moving into second position. Minster is still in fifth place right now. This could be the race of the day. Coldwater is on the inside and she is coming hard. Wow. Look at this. Look at this. Look at her go. Once a year we see it, an athlete that's so special that she comes out of nowhere. And look at this run, Jennifer. Can she get her? She's going to wait around the curve and see if she can get her on the flat side of the stretch. Folks, Izzy Zahn is just such a special runner. Izzy Zahn's Izzy got Zahn the lead. Izzy Zahn is just such a special runner. Her ability to focus, to hone in. Can she hold off, though? This is going to be close to the finish. Izzy Zahn did a great she job. Yeah, what a great job of getting in position to fend off the second-place runner. What an impressive run. 356.13. That's just amazing. Mogador will finish second with a 356.20. Smithville is in third place. Margareta is in fourth. Calvert is in fifth. And Minster finishes sixth with a 404.22. Nice work by Coldwater. Absolutely. Coldwater with the championship. And Mogador was the team we couldn't identify. <laughs> I'm with the new state champs in the 4x4, the ladies from Coldwater. Ladies, introduce yourselves. Audrey Alec. Becca Wenning, Kirsten Keller, Izzy Zahn. Uh, ladies, congratulations on the state championship. Uh, we'll start down here. Um, as a freshman, are you, are you still in shock or are you taking it all in? Oh, I'm absolutely in shock. Like, it's so processing right now. Uh -huh. The lone senior on this group, are you kind of the leader of this 4x4? Um, I guess, but they all carry their own weight, so I don't do a whole lot for them, I guess. Your last race in high school, how, how the mixed emotions, is it bittersweet or is it all sweet right now? Oh, uh, no, it's all pretty good. I mean, set the new school record, one state, so I mean, what more could you ask for? I noticed that the, you guys that took a moment on the podium and you guys had a nice long embrace. Uh, how close is this team? So close. We're, <laughs> we're tight. <laughs> yep. and, and Izzy, does it ever get old uh, getting another first place? No, it does not. Every new win, I take it as a great opportunity and... I don't take it as the same thing every time. I'm just grateful. Well, ladies, congratulations. I know you got a, a lot to celebrate. Yeah, go over to your team. Congratulations on another state championship. Let's head back up to Jennifer and Danny. And the time has come, folks, for the final race in the Division Three State Track and Field Championships. And we want to remind you one more time that our premiere for Marion Local is OPAC. OPAC in Osgood. For all your industrial painting, staining, and assembly needs, call OPAC. In lane one, we have Van Buren. Lane two is Wellington. Lane three is New Middletown Springfield. Lane four, Marion Local. Lane five, Lowellville. Lane six, Wayne Trace. 
Lane 7, Mooney, and Lane 8, Tusky Valley. And you know what? I just thought about this. Wayne Trace, Maddox Trace. Yeah, he's out of the race. That's right. Yeah. Big unexpected change. That's really unfortunate. Yeah, for them. they had two seniors in that race, and Maddox Trace is no longer in that race. Marion Local comes in with the fastest time of 3.23. If Marion Local can score 10 points here, that's huge in terms of a team title. They are off and they are going. Marion Local does have that fastest seat time, 3.23.16. Expect them to be challenged by Lowellville, who's got a 3.23.75. The one thing about Marion Local and their relay teams, Jennifer, those kids never panic. If they're in the fourth, fifth position, they just continue to push, and they do a great job of steadying themselves. And they're always at the, at the end of the race, always in contention. They are. They are. That's true. Wayne Trace, we talked about how they lost their anger, but they're still looking pretty strong yeah. here. That's Eli Trace, I believe. Another Trace there leading things off. Mary Local already making some moves. Aiden Grishamp getting ready to hand off to Victor Holscher. Victor Holscher does a great job on the second leg. We saw him all fall season. He was hurt a little bit during the football campaign, but he comes out for the spring track, and he's doing a great job. Hudson Myers of Wayne Trace. Uh, I'm impressed with what I'm seeing. They're, they're a strong team. Yeah, and here, look, Mary Local, I'm going to tell you something. This is the weight room right here. Those 400 runners spend a lot of time in the weight room, and you're seeing it right here. Moving over now. Oh, that's a real close that, move. That's Yeah, that's a lot of position right there. Those guys are jockeying right now, trying to get around each other. It's going to be tough in the 400. Yeah, you see Holscher having to go to the outside a little bit. He's expanding a lot of energy for Mary Local, and now he's boxed in. He can't get around the other two. He's going to go to the inside. Now he's coming oh, back, now to he's the going back to the outside. And he's going to take the lead. Oh, look at him move. He's going to pass off to Andrew Pullman. And then Wesley Shane is the anchor for Mary Lincoln. Oh, that was a almost. Almost. An almost. Almost. Yeah. Yes, an almost almost yeah. looks like he got tied up with one of the other runners. Wayne Trace has dropped to the fourth place spot. Uh, remember, we also have Van Buren, who is Landon Fisher as their third runner. Oh, we're seeing movement again. Oh, that's the thing I love about the 400. Yeah, this is going to oh, be a four great by four finish. This say. is going to be a great finish. Wow, Marion Local still holding them off, but this is going to be a challenge. I believe this is Lowellville on the outside. And that's what we expected. Marion Local and Lowellville coming in very, very close in, in their times from yesterday. Yeah, they've been waiting for this race all year long. I'm telling you, they've been watching times. Each of these teams, Lowellville's taking the lead right now. All right, guys, it's going to come down to the anchor. We're going to see what happens here. Wesley Shane's going to take that baton. Oh, watch him. He is chasing, chasing, chasing him down. He's got his work cut out for him. It's a two-man race right now. Last 200. This is when they both have to kick it in. And Lowellville, yeah, man, look say at it's that. Mono That's Mono, Mono Ballone. We've said that name multiple times. Yeah, he's had a fantastic two-day event. That's a shame, though. Don't count him out. Does he have enough in him? Lowellville's going to win it. And they got it. Marion Local will get second. And let's hold on here until we can see all the results of this entire heat. Still eight big points for the Marion Local Flyers. Second place, 321-35. New Middletown Springfield gets third. Wellington is fourth. Mooney is fifth. Tusky Valley gets sixth. Wayne Trace is seventh. And Van Buren is a wow what a meet what a what meet a, what a meet what all a meet. the great meets we've seen all year this is the icing on the cake the best of the best i've said it before this continues to be a hidden gem if you don't get to be part of the state track meet you need to get down here folks it's absolutely fantastic it has been a great 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 time i'm gonna cough for just a moment we've been talking so much <laughs> right now at this moment we've got the four by eight ladies on the podium cold water Izzy's on. So many fun things that we could talk about <laughs> in everything that happened. Let's talk about who we had helping us out all weekend. We want to say a big thank you 
to Ken Rieger, of course, our wonderful director, Megan Sherrick on camera. We got Miles Holiday and Abby Beck on interviews in field. Jake Bonilla has been around all weekend. Nick Fraley, our fearful, fearless, I should say. Fearless. Fearful. Yeah. Nick, you're not fearful. <laughs> I'm not our scared of you. Fearless, <laughs> wonderful operations manager. Um, of course, we also want to thank Tim Street and Scott Rex for everything that they do. And Danny Holbrook, it's been great to do this. It's been yeah, a great season. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And you, you did a great job. And you know how else did a great job? The University of Dayton. What a first class operation. That's right. We want to thank the Dayton Public Schools and the University of Dayton for hosting the state championships for the first time. It really has been a nice event. It has. Well, that's going to wrap it up for everyone. And for everyone of WSN, I'm Jennifer Beck. Thanks so much for the entire season, folks. It has been so much fun to broadcast your kids. We can't wait to do it again. It's fall, starting in football. Of course, you're going to watch this track meet all season long. And all the, I mean, all summer long. Um, signing off from the University of Dayton and Welcome Stadium. For Danny Holbrook, I'm Jennifer Beck. Thank you so much for joining us right here on WOSN.